Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Dow Jones News Fund Internship Program Test Prep Session. Um, I'm going to give you a short uh, PowerPoint presentation to go over some tips for the test, and then we're going to dive in and look at actually last year's test. Um, participation is encouraged when we get to that part. I'm gonna We're going to read off the questions, and you're going to shout out the answers as we go uh, when we get to that part. But first, um, let me tell you a little bit about the test. Um, so there are nine sections. It's a little bit different than last year. Last year, I think it was six. I sort of split them up. So, um, you know, the, the last year, current events, geography, grammar, AP style were all one really long section. So we've broken those up. So hopefully give some people some breathing room. Um, but basically, each section is scored separately. So at the end, you know, we could see where your strengths and weaknesses are and it helps us figure out maybe which programs you'd be better suited for depending on your general knowledge. Um, so the first question is the video question. Um, and that is really treat it like an interview question. And it really is. We want to see what makes you get excited about journalism, what like you like to do in journalism. I strongly recommend you don't write an answer and read from a piece of paper. Um, it really sort of drains your presentation. Um, we like to meet you and, and see what makes you get excited naturally. Um, and then current events, geography, grammar, AP style, and then all the other programs. So I'm gonna go through each one a little bit. So the best way to prepare is Google the top stories of the year. Um, you know, And really what we're talking about is January through August. We finalized the test by mid to late August. So to yesterday's events in the house will not be on the test, I can safely say. Um, yeah, hopefully not that that doesn't change any of the questions on this year's test. I always got to get worried about that, um, that, some, that some major event will change one of the questions, but I think we're going to be okay. Um, and then so refresh your knowledge of U.S. geography. You'll see when we go through last year's test, there are five geography questions where you're going to have to first identify, you know, what is that public? It's a current events question. And then you have to identify what state it happened in on a map. Um, and sometimes we do have international maps. Um, I think we did last year. Um, so and then I also recommend looking at our previous tests. And I'll show you on our website where you can find the previous tests. Um, and then definitely look at the New York Times current events quizzes. I definitely pull inspiration from some of their questions. Um, I look page through those to see and get some ideas. And then I would always Google for, you know, AP style grammar uh, quiz, um, either quizzes or tip sheets, you know, the most commonly um, things. So for editing, that's really where we're going to be looking at the AP style grammar, how you answer those questions. So for AP style, Definitely all the basics that you should know, numbers, 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 think of dates, ages, weights, measurements, time, um, money, you know, all the different ways that numbers are written in different situations. You know, what are the rules if, you know, depending on what, where the number is being used, titles, um, cities and states, you know, in, in some cases, cities, you list the city and the state and some you don't. Um, so sort of knowing some of these um, little rules that, you know, when you're a reporter, you're sort of expected to know them on the, on the go as you as you write your story. Um, and then for grammar, think of the most commonly mistaken words, um, who whom is one that comes to mind, um, you know, things like that. Um, you know, try to brush up on some of your grammar rules. Um, and think of like commonly mistaken words. Um, and also for SEO headline writing, try to refresh yourselves on practices of SEO headline writing. Um, that would be really helpful for you for our test. You know, what are some, um, look, just look at the news, see, go con con compare a print headline to a digital headline. And what are the things you notice? Um, what are things that, you know, look at the best practices for SEO headlines. Um, and that will really help you when it comes to the editing, and the SEO headline writing and grammar sections. For the digital, we um, are really trying to assess your digital literacy. So there are a lot of questions about different digital tools, apps, sort of lingo that you might be using in a digital space, whether it's with video or web. Um, you know, previous test questions have been like, what does URL mean? What does SEO mean? Um, you know, what are the different metrics that you use on a website to um, test if it's popular? 
Um, what are different programs that a lot of digital journalists use? Um, and uh, being familiar with them, different file formats, um, you know, just things that we expect, you know, sort of people who work in digital space sort of just know these things in instinctively. So that would be for digital media. Business reporting, we're really testing you on business concepts, not necessarily the reporting part, but like, you know, think of what have been the major stories in the news this year when it comes to business. Are there any economic trends? Um, <clears throat> what are key concepts? Who are the key public figures who oversee the key, the, the major um, branches of government that regulate our economy and the different aspects of it, the market? Um, so, uh, you know, think about all those different things and the key concepts and definitions of those things, um, key economic principles. Those will all be helpful for you for the business questions. And data journalism, we're asking about concepts related to data, graphing data, different charts, um, data integrity. Definitely always have a question about mean, median, and mode. So knowing the difference between those and how to find those how to calculate percentage change. We always have one of those. Um, and just like different principles for having um, the data integrity. And, and I would also say, I didn't have it on here, but um, Freedom of Information Act and sort of key concepts around requesting records. That also is a common thing that we put on the test. Uh, oh, I got to delete this side because we do not have open-ended questions this year. That was on last year's test, uh, but we got rid of them this year. So you are going to be lucky. Um, practice is the breast preparation. So I'm going to show you online. You can download last year's test and it's only going to be a, a PDF document. What I'm going to show you a little bit is the actual interface of how the test looks online. But when you do the, when you download the practice test, it's just going to be um, a PDF Word document. And so you can download a blank version and then you can download the answer key and then compare how you did. Um, and then, so that's it for the slides. Um, I have a question. Um, let me see. Oh, sorry. I thought that was a question. Looks like we have an AI bot helping along. Um, okay. So for this portion, when I'm going to turn to um, the the actual platform, higher view, I have to stop my 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 video camera to get to work, and I'm going to stop sharing and screen share again. Screen. Okay. So now you guys can see my screen. Let me try to get out of here. Okay, so we're gonna go to my email. Um, and you will see here, there's an email that says, Higher View Qualifying Test for the Dow Jones News Fund. This year has a slightly different name, but you know that's what the email will look like. You can ignore estimated duration. Um, it re the test should take, people have been taking it about 40 minutes to an hour. Um, I would say 40, probably closer, 45 minutes to take it. So you just click on this link, take the test. And it's going to bring you to the platform. Um, and can I just, um, can someone write in the chat? Are you guys able to see my screen? I just want to make sure you're all seeing this before I move yep. on. I can see it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yes, good. All right. So this is what it looks like. So hello, Heather Taylor. I'm going to continue. This is your first time. Oh, <laughs> what? What did I do? Okay. I don't know what that was. So here we go. Uh, some people ask for accommodations. We are notified if you do ask for accommodations. Usually that's for people who um, require no time limits, um, uh, you know, that they have certain disabilities, uh, but we will be notified. So, but that is an option for people who ask if there's uh, accommodations for disabilities. Okay, so this, I'm gonna skip over this. This is a little intro video I do that basically says, you can stop now and sign up for a test prep session <laughs> if you want to get a review. Um, and I go over some points of like, you know, we don't want this is not an open book exam. You're not supposed to have the AP style guide at your side. We don't want you Googling for the answers. We time this test to try to minimize that from happening. Um, 
So that's just like a little intro video that you can watch. This year, it's actually me on camera. Um, okay, so here we go. If you want, you could do a pre practice question just to check your functionality. If you want to make sure your video and, um, and, and, and microphone is working, we're going to skip doing the practice and we're going to continue without practicing. So you only get one attempt at the video question, but you will have time, I believe, to prepare. So here you go. What do you view as your best quality as it relates to a journalism career? Please tell us why. Um, and so you see the timer has not started yet. So you can take this time to figure out what you want to say. But when you're ready, um, you start recording. Okay. And so as I said, we really like to meet you and get a personality for who you are, what gets you excited about journalism, what you hope to accomplish. Um, you know, if there are certain tracks that you really like, maybe you want to tailor your best quality to something that relates and tracks to that track that you're selecting. Um, maybe it's very broad. Um, it really, there's no right or wrong answer, but this is the first thing, like usually when we're evaluating candidates, the video is the first thing we look at. We like to first get a feel for who are we looking at? Who, you know, who's this candidate? So we do look at the videos for everyone. Um, but then when you're done, you can hit done answering. And I'll stress, don't feel like you have to fill the three minutes. Um, you know, it's not, you know, we don't like it when like someone just keeps on repeating the same thing over and over and over again for three minutes. <laughs> um, so when you say what you have to say, you can move on. And then we go to the next section. So as I said, this section is actually going to be broken into three sections this year instead of this one big section of 30 questions. Um, so let's start. And this is where audience participation um, and this is not going to be there this year. They gave us, they allowed us to add instructions. So we got rid of this screen, but um, all right, get your guys ready to shout out the answers. And so in between each screen is this pause page. So if you need to get up and go to the bathroom, go get a glass of water in between each question you can, but as you're about to see, each question will give you about 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the question to answer within the allotted time. Russia. Russia. That is correct. So you have to click the answer and hit done answering before this response time finishes. If you hit the answer but don't hit um, done answering, then you won't get credit for the question. Um, so that was easy, right? <laughs> that was an easy way to start. Um, and then again, you get this pause screen and you can start again when you're ready. Next question. Academy Awards. That is correct. All right. So who authorizes the vaccines? Which government agency? CDC. It's the FDA, FDA, FDA. actually. Tricky question. Soccer. That is correct. Now, okay, let's say you're taking this test and all of a sudden your internet goes out. Oh my goodness, you're freaking out. What do I do? All you have to do is go back to the email and sit, click the test, take the test, and it should bring you back to the question that you were just on. Let's just see and make sure this worked. <laughs> It usually does. Um, I also tell people, okay, so yeah, you got interrupted. Let's resume. I tell people also, like if you, all of our questions are JPEG images. So if you are on a computer with a weak Wi-Fi signal, some people have had the issue where the images aren't loading quick enough. And so, you know, when you have a 30 second counter um, on the clock with the question, if your image isn't loading fast enough, you're, you know, you're going to have less time. So I, I recommend just close out of the test and wait till you get a better Wi-Fi, si a better signal for the internet to resume the test, you know, if that is an issue for you, um, if the if the images aren't loading fast enough. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. Oh, 
Uh, did they bring me back to the front? Okay, no, we're gonna go back to question five. Oh, you might have lost the point on that question though. So, I'm sorry. Anyone have an answer? His resignation. His resignation, yes, that is correct. Disney? That is correct. Oh, I'll just say the one, the question that we missed um, was a hard one. It was um, in August, Congress passed the in Inflation Reduction Act, which aims to reduce taxes, health care costs, and greenhouse emissions by, and then you had to pick which percentage it was, 5, 10, 40, or 50 percent. So that was probably on the harder side. That was 40 percent was the correct answer for that. So thinking of key pieces of legislation that may have been passed in the year, um, you know, key leaders, you know, the wor world leaders, questions like that are things to look for when you're looking at current events. And innovations in science, so. Space Webb Telescope. Uh, yes, the, Jam the, the, the James Webb Telescope. That was an image that went viral all last summer, if you guys remember. Um, Twenty fourteen. That is correct. All of the above. Oh, oops. Sorry, and there's a national test going on. <laughs> Um, I guess we all are getting that on your end. Hold on, sorry. I'm going to turn off my phone. <laughs> uh, yes, that uh... was all of the above. Sorry, guys. You know, everyone was posting on social media. There was going to be a national test today. Um, I didn't think about that. <laughs> um, okay, so now this is an AP style question. Does anyone know? Is capital it the third option? Latino? Yes, Latino with a capital L. Not Latino, lowercase. All right, good job. Cord? That is correct. Towards is not really a word to use ever. So that's the that's the, the thing to remember. Okay. This goes back to what I said about knowing states and cities and the different rules. The third option. That is correct. And that was like a sort of a tricky one. You have to know that Honolulu is one of, I think, like 15 or 17 cities that you don't put the state with. See, this is why I talk about the, the picture not loading, but here we go. Spelled out eight. No, I believe it's the number when it's ages. Right? I'll have to check. That's what I have on my answer key. The first one? Yes, that is correct. Okay, how do you write COVID by AP style? Uh, 
Is it the first one? That is correct. And the important thing here was that we said on first reference, because I think you can say the coronavirus lowercase on second references, um, I believe. So that was a key thing to look for is if it says on first reference, if there's a rule about that. The second one? That's correct. Word usage. So this is like examples of things that are on the grammar section. Um, it's grammar and word usage, spelling. The second one? Yes. The second one? Mm-hmm. Um, Brooks brother is a singular, but the pronoun is plural. That is correct. Okay, so the next set of questions are identifying public figures, where we give you photos of people who've been in the news that year, and you have to answer the question. I've heard the New York Times also has a photo identifying people quiz. That is that yes, correct. That was quick. <laughs> Katanji Brown Jackson. Yeah. John, John Batiste. Batiste. Mm hmm. Sean White. Yep. Japan. Yep. See, that was pretty easy. You guys got those quick. Okay, now we're going to jump into the math questions. Um, which people usually hate. <laughs> Some of these get really tricky, especially if you have to remember uh, news from last year than the state, but let's go for it. And you might have to scroll over on the right because we do sometimes have a lot of long numbers. 38. So, uh, yes, very good. Thirty three. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I should let you guys be able to read it. This might be a tough one. <laughs> 12. 12 is correct. Yes, it was in Texas. Fourteen. Yes, yes, that was the big, I think the first real referendum sent after the Supreme Court decision was in Kansas. Thirty-nine. Uh, yeah, New York. Yep. Thirty-nine. Okay, I think um you finished part one. So that was the 
current events, grammar, AP style examples of the type of questions um, that you might see for this year. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're ready to go on. Now we're gonna go to the editing section. So this we won't have, but that was on last year's test. More AP style. <laughs> The last one? Nope. It is the Which... second one. Close. Third one? That is correct. So this is also a type of thing that we would do for SEO section, asking about headlines, which one's a print headline, which one's a digital headline, which one's an SEO headline. B? Uh, yes, B is correct. C. This one for the search engine optimi boil heights, C. Is it B? B oh. is correct. Mm -hmm. Good job. So yeah, um, this year we've broken it out. So the SEO will be its own section. And then editing, I think, is more um, grammar and AP style questions. Um, just more AP style <laughs> and, and grammar. Um, and SEO will be scored separately because we do have the audience engagement track. Um, so we just want to be able to sort of get a clearer picture um between or distinction between the scores um okay. was yes again this is another one of those looking up the rules for different words and grammar commonly mistaken words So this one we give a little bit longer. We give a minute. <laughs> some of these, some of the longer ones, when we get into the sections, we give more time. If you have to like really read and try to spot the differences. Is it C? C is correct. Yep. Good job. Is it C? That is correct. I would give three minutes for this one because it was a very long sentences. <laughs> Is it B? B is correct. Good job. Um, okay. 
So this next question we don't have on the test anymore. Um, we did do, we used to have open-ended questions, which we have, um, last year we made you copy and paste and then edit, but you don't have to do that this year. So we're just gonna skip over it. <laughs> okay, so that was the editing section. Now we're gonna go into digital. C. What did you say? C. C is correct. Good job. False. Uh, correct. Yeah, that was our, sometimes we do ask ethics questions. We have, we pepper ethics questions sometimes within the test in different spots. That was one of those. First option? Yep. Oh yeah, can you see all of them? Yeah, it's, oops, we gotta get in the time. So here, choose four. And shout them out. Page views. Page views, yes. Scroll depth. Yep. Click through rate. Yep. And one more. Average, Average session. session. Yep. That's correct. Go four. That'd be probably another SEO question on our test, you know, if we as we sort of realign things um, on the test. All right. Okay, so this is a tricky one because we don't tell you how many are right, but um, yeah. So which select all that apply is all we say. So it does tell you it's more than one. A. A is correct. D. Which one? D, the fourth. D, yep, that is correct. And one more. E. No. C. C. C-M-Y-K. No, for wet, for online, for computer screens, it's RGB. C-M-Y-K is for print products. Um, what is a geotag? Oh, sorry, I was reading the question. <laughs> Let me scroll down here so you guys can see all the answers. The last one? No. The fourth one? Fourth, yeah, metadata. Yeah, the metadata. <laughs> the second one. Yes. What's the official pronunciation? I don't even know what the official pronunciation is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sometimes I'll pull from like um, social media, like things that have gone viral, memes and stuff uh, on our tests. Uh, okay, well, we are not doing, we don't have open-ended question this year, so we can skip over that one. 
Okay, now we're going to business reporting, which is really business concepts. So this is for last year. So I know it's, it's sometimes hard to put yourself in the mind frame of what was going on last year. The second one? Second one is correct. Third option? Hmm? The third option? The third, yes, third is correct. Second one? No. The answer is the last one? one. It's the last one. Capitals gains tax. All right. Let's see if you guys remember this one. <laughs> this is big news last year. $44 billion. $44 billion, yes. False. Right, that's false. You probably hear this in the news a lot. Let me talk about when it comes out every month. Jobs. The jobs report, yeah. <laughs> Dollar and euro, one to one. Yep. All right. And we always love a percentage change question. <laughs> 20 percent. 20, yep. Okay, so we're going to skip this next one is the open ended one, which we're going to skip because um, we don't have that. So you're almost done. Can you believe that? We're going to go through this test that quickly. Um, so next is just the data journalism section. Okay. Okay, this one's long. So which data must be obtained from a state government agency? Select all that apply. So you know it's more than one. And it's a very long list. So sorry, I was trying to, let me see if you guys can see that. So who would you get from a gov state government agency? I realize, I think about it now, I'm not sure if every state's the same, but I'm hoping they are. <laughs> I didn't get any complaints last year, so. Gubernatorial campaign contributions. Yeah, that'd be one. List of registered voters. Yeah. State budget. Yep. And the last one is list of gun permit holders, but I realize that might not be the case in every state now. But um, I don't know. I'll have to do research. No, one's, no one complained about it last year, so I'd be curious to find out if that was wrong or not in some states. But um, in New Jersey, it's the case where we're based. 
So that's it. Municipality. That's correct. That's one. School well, district. Yeah. The last one is the White House, the government. So government agencies, you can't. You can't get records requests from newspapers, your neighbors, or public, private, public, private companies. Um. Okay. Questions about mean, median, and mode. As I said, we always like to ask a mean, median, and mode question. Median. Median is correct. All right. Um, my guess is probably a hard one. I don't know. <laughs> This one is fuzzy matching. I find these on different quizzes and stuff, these questions. Okay. All right. Which numbers are the outliers? Outliers. Two and five. That is correct. So here you get a bunch of different data in different formats. What should you do? Is it A, change all the data? Oh, never mind. All the dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. It sets the correct, that's the answer. You know, because like in Europe, they do um, the date, then the month, then the year. In the U.S., we do it flip. So it's just saying make them all the, like the same consistent format. So you're right. Um, okay. The first one. Yep, that's right. B? Uh, yes, B is correct. And I think, oh, last one. A? <clears throat> yes, duplicate record. And I think that's it. We don't, we don't have a, the open-ended question. You're done. You do not have to do, um, they might send you a survey. You don't have to do this survey. We don't get the responses. The survey responses go to higher view. So feel free to, and then you're there. All right. So you guys just went through last year's test. Um, you know, similar concepts for this year. Um, 
I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could add um, to help you guys. I think I gave you as many tips as I can. Let me turn on my my um, screen. Do I, does anyone want to ask any questions? Oh, sorry, I was late. Where can I get the previous test from the website? Oh, perfect. Great question. Yeah, let me um, share my screen. So if you go to our website, you guys are seeing my web. Are you seeing the website? Yes. Okay, so go. Um, actually, well, the URL, it's just our website slash test. And there you go. You can download um, the blank version and the answer key. And we go back. So especially for like the grammar and AP style questions, even though AP style sometimes changes over the years if they make updates to it. But, you know, some of those commonly mistaken words, going back an old test is a great way. Just do like the little, the, the, the sections. There's like usually going to be like 10 grammar AP style questions on each test. Um, and so you can pull it. Um, but yeah, this is where you where you can get it. The other way to find it is if you go to like one of our programs, college students, and you just click on one of the programs you're interested in. We have all these downloads um, on the on the left. So practice tests. We'll also the recordings will be available on our website. We'll post them here under resources um, on our YouTube page, so that you can access the recordings later. But um, yeah, you can get the, get the practice test there. And uh, one thing I didn't really say at the front is like, you know, the test, it is something we look at. It is, you know, the starting point. It's not the only thing. If you do poorly on the test, it's okay. We definitely, you know, no one gets a perfect score. <laughs> um, so it's 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 not um, something that we want you to be overly stressed about. We don't want you to, you know, just say, oh, this is, looks too hard for me. I'm not doing it. Just do it. Give it a try. You never know. Um, you'd be surprised. The current events for this year hopefully will be more fresh in your mind um, if any of these seemed really hard for you. Um, hopefully, if you just do a quick Google search and look up some of the big stories, it'll be easy. Um, but yeah, it's our starting point, and we do score them specifically. So let's say you're really interested in being in, you know, in the editing program and you bomb all the business questions. It's okay. We score them separately. Again, this is what, where we could see where your strengths are. In, you know, in the different programs, um, your, in your comprehension of the different concepts. Um, oh, someone else can get partial credit on questions like this. So the ones where it was like three, you know, check off more than one. Yeah, you get points per one you check off. So some of those that were like had three answers, it might be one point each. So you would like if you got two of them right, you would get two out of three points. I have another dumb question. It's my first time to apply this program. So after I turn in the survey, do I just get an email about the task or how do I get the task? Uh, so first you have to apply. So yeah. first you apply um, for a program. I can show you where that um, application is. And then after you apply, I have to manually send everyone um, the link through from higher view. So usually it'll take me a day or two, um, depending on when you, you know, if you apply over the weekend, I'm not going to get to it till Monday morning. Um, we also, um, let me see, go over here. Uh, you can get the link. Here's the application. So here's where you select which programs. And we did do an info session where I went through everything and I'm going to have the recording. I'll be posting that to our website and we have another info session next week. So if you wanted to dive in more on the particulars of the program and the application, definitely come to the info session on that. Um, but where, what was the question again? Repeat the question one more time. It's like, uh, like, do I get an email from, uh, do I get the, like the task link from your email? Oh yeah, so I will manually email to you. Um, okay. So usually I do it the next day. Sometimes I do it like that day, you know, I'm, I'm always going in, depends on how busy. I was going to say the email will say, please take this test within 72 hours. Um, we're not strict right now about that. Like if you applied last week and you still haven't taken the test, it's fine. I tell people the absolute deadline is November 20th. So if you're one of those people who likes to wait to the very last deadline of the application, it's due um, November 16th. All those people will be emailed the test link on November 17th when I log on in the morning and they will have until the 20th to take it. Right now, if you applied, you'd have, you know, as much time as you want to take it. So um, just wanted to put that out there. You know, it's not always so great to wait to last minute. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Other questions? 
I had written a question in the chat and someone else, um, I believe Lauren also was wondering, um, is there a way to access our scores after taking the exam? No. In all of our years, we never release the scores. We don't want students um, sharing their scores. Um, and, and it doesn't really, they just never, we never have. We never give out scores. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, I'm just curious, like, because I want to know, like, what I'm strong in. <laughs> I know. People are always asking me afterwards. But, you know, it'd be unfair because someone would be like, well, I got this score and you're at this newsroom. How come you got to, you know, we don't want jealousy, rivalry. Um, and also, we don't just go by the score. People have gotten almost perfect scores on the test and not gotten into our program because then we look at their resume. We look at their essay. You know, this, the, the test is just one component out of many that we look at. Um, people can do really bad on the test, but then have an incredible resume and set of clips and work that they've done. They just had an off day and didn't get the test done. So they still get in the program. So we just don't want people um, comparing each other or thinking like it's not fair because we don't, the test isn't the, the sole factor in our program. So. I will say for like the editing program, those are some of our more competitive internships. We will be looking heavily at like how you do on AP style and grammar questions. That's probably where the test factors in the most. Um, and it's definitely the starting point when we initially are making phone calls, like, you know, we start our selection process in December. We definitely look at the people who scored highest first, but we definitely look through everyone. You know, it's not just the test score. Um, I am going to, um, well, first, thank you everyone for coming. I'm going to stop the recording and then people who want to ask a question without it being recorded can also do that. Let me, um, oops, here we go.